the primary emergencies that would happen in the greater Seattle area are earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Talking a 7.0, 8.0, a large earthquake that would make a lot of the normal on-grid, business as usual type stuff no longer be working. So we're talking no electricity, we're talking traffic stops, uh, no one's able to drive, there might be debris on the roadway. You're gonna probably have to be on foot and a lot of people are probably gonna be injured and seeking out help. My main goal for my emergency preparedness is to prepare myself and my family and take care of them. My name is Cliff and I'm known as the Urban Prepper. So I started getting into emergency preparedness about 10 years ago. When I started my YouTube channel called The Urban Prepper at the time, I didn't find that there was an outlet for people like me working in the city in an urban environment with a desk job. And over the last 10 years, the channel's grown to around 172,000 subscribers. Most people, when they think of the word prepper, they think of something like a doomsday prepper, someone that's very extreme, that uh, has underground bunkers and things like that. The day of doom is coming. Your blood will turn white. Your face will turn green. Your eyeballs will pop. For me, once they get to know the type of prepping that I'm interested in, they see it as more of a practical thing. It's just a form of insurance for the unexpected that you hope you never have to use. I think when you look at it in that light, it becomes less of an extremist type view and more of just a practical thing that most people should want to do. So for me, there's urban preppers and there's rural preppers. Rural preppers are more concerned about things in the outdoors, like having fishing kits and making fires and things like that. An urban prepper is dealing with stuff in an urban environment where there's a lot more electricity, you're part of the grid there, and it's a certain set of stuff supplies and a different set of skills that you would want to use in that type of environment. So if an earthquake did hit, we're talking a large earthquake, my main goal was to try to get home within 24 hours if I could, between 24 to 48 hours from downtown Seattle to my home that's in the suburbs. We're going to try to get out of the city as quick as possible. So this is where speed is more important than trying to find shelter or anything like that. We want to get out of this urban environment because in an earthquake scenario, we're going to have to have a concern with aftershocks. So you're going to have to have situational awareness overall with the entire environment. So I'm going to make contact with my home base, my wife, using text message to let her know, hey, I'm coming home. It's going to take me 24 to 48 hours. So on my cell phone and on her cell phone, we use an app called Life360, which is a family tracking app. So we're going to be able to have GPS locations for where we're all at. So she's going to be able to track me as I'm making my journey from downtown Seattle to home. Water is a little tough to come by in an urban environment because you don't have access to rivers and lakes. So what you want to do if you're in the city is look for one of these industrial spigots that are water access points. They're oftentimes found next to the fire pumps that are available right next door to it. But to access this, you need something called a four-way Silcott key. If there is no electricity and no pump activated, you, st you still may have a little bit of water there that you can fill up your water bottle during an evacuation if you don't have any water with you. At some point, you're probably gonna get a little bit tired and you might need to take a break or even sleep if you have to travel a great distance. My home is about 25 miles or so away from downtown Seattle, so at some point I may wanna rest for a little bit. When you're away from an urban environment that has a lot of concrete and overpasses, you may get out into the suburbs a little bit where you wanna start talking about making some kind of makeshift shelter option, which can include something as simple as an emergency thermal blanket or a bivy bag. So they do rip a little bit. Now for comms, you might want to have an emergency radio that has NOAA weather band, uh, which is, provides information on the, these type of emergency events. Even though this is an emergency situation that's earthquake related, you still, you want to be on the safe side. So finding a discreet location where you're away from people because you never know who's going to be coming around here. If you wanted to set up a perimeter around you, it'd be a very small kit that you could add in here. So if anyone did enter your perimeter as you're trying to rest, you would be notified and then you could take some kind of action based off of that.
So for phase three, that's when you finally make it home after going through your long bug out route or evacuation route from the downtown area. So the first thing that I would do is first check on the safety of my wife and kids and also on the integrity of the home. If the home looks like it's not structurally sound and it's not safe to be at, you probably want to do a short term evacuation bug out to the driveway or to the backyard. So I have stuff for water purification and disinfecting. I have comms items. I have food items, includes MRE and other long-term food storage items, PPE for disinfecting wipes, for face masks, for hand sanitizer, items like that, additional shelter items, clothing, first aid, cooking, fire. If the house is not structurally sound, I would set up this large eight-person tent to be a makeshift shelter outside of the home. At some point, someone might have to use the restroom, for example, too, and so I also have stuff for sanitation purposes. The best idea for preppers is to try to find other like-minded people that are experts in some things and have them combine as a group. It's better to be a part of a community than it is to just be some individual in an emergency situation.